Imagine a world where you can find what you need in 30 seconds or less, no matter how long it's been. That's essentially what we're talking about in this part of the course. Organizing and managing your receipts. Now, I've underscored quite a bit that one of the primary purposes of using an app like Expensify is to streamline processes and reduce the amount of time you have to spend with this kind of information. Then you might have somebody like me who actually likes to spend time with this managing the information for the very specific purpose of making sure it can be accessed, referenced, and found when needed. That's what this part of Expensify is really all about. Understanding how to use the interface to organize and manage the receipts is going to go a long way to helping you make sure that you can find what you need when you need it when you have no independent recollection of what it was or where it's been. Let's see what this looks like. Organizing and managing your receipts. Who could think of a more exciting thing to do with your time? Seriously though, the, that's, that's kind of the point actually, is that I don't want to spend a lot of time dealing with this, but I do want to know that when the time comes that I need to retrieve something, let's say worst case scenario I'm being audited and my expenses are being questioned and I want to be able to go find the receipts that they need me to produce in order to prove out the expenses quickly. I don't want this to be stressful. I don't want it to take a lot of time. In fact, I want a big smile to come across my face knowing that I've got a system in place that allows me to find whatever the auditors are looking for in 30 seconds or less, no matter how long it's been. That's kind of the philosophy that I like to apply to the system that I'm going to employ when it comes to tracking and managing receipts and expenses and so on. That's the rule. I got to be able to find it in 30 seconds or less. So let's see how Expensify provides a platform through which we can do this. And I'm going to show you in this video some really cool integrations that they have. But first, let's deal with just the Expensify part. As you can see on the screen here, and I pointed this out on the right up, on the left hand side, I've got some filters. It's important to recognize what it is that I'm seeing in the screen. I've got a date range in place that lets me know receipts that I'm seeing, you know, what the date range is that those receipt dates fall into. I'm looking at unreported receipts, meaning that once these receipts have been attached to an expense and reported, they won't be in this view if that's what I've chosen here in this drop down. Of course, I can show unsubmitted, submitted, and deleted. So those are my choices there. I'm also seeing, as evidenced by the fact that it's checked off, unattached receipts and attached receipts. So let's say I didn't want to see the receipts that have by now been attached to an expense. I can uncheck that. And actually, they've all been attached in this case. So, and I like what this does. It says, you still have receipts somewhere. So everything that I have in here has been attached to an expense. Now, what's interesting uh, to me about that is that I've got three receipts here that uh, shouldn't be. <laughs> but maybe they're all attached to the same expense. That's what I want to go check out. Because these three receipts represent the same exact expense. Uh, that I was, you know, playing around with in terms of uploading the receipts, which brings up the next point, which is look at the difference in quality. I mentioned this previously in the course, that my preference is to scan the receipts because look at the difference. If I click this, and then you can click the thumbnail of the image so you can get the full image coming up here. Look how nice and clean that receipt looks versus one that I took with my smartphone. You can still see the information, but it's, just, it's not as crisp, it's not as clear. Right, so to me, it's much, this is exactly why you're seeing it right in front of you, the exact reason why I prefer to have a scan rather than a picture taken with my mobile app. It's just cleaner. So as you can see, I can uh, select these receipts and I can merge them. So let's do that because they all represent the exact same expense. It says the merge button is used to combine two expenses that represent the same transaction. Use this function to select two receipts with attached expenses. Minimally, data. click the merge button to combine them into one expense with the receipt attached. So I guess I can only do two at a time. So let's merge two. Save. Now, I can't merge these two because if you click in here and look and pay attention to the details, of course, this one's attached to an expense, as is evidenced by the fact that the option that shows up here is detach expense. This one is not. So they both, both have to be attached to an expense in order, for the, uh, in order for you to be able to merge the receipts. So what I do in a case like this, since it's clearly the exact same receipt, is I would just delete this. And as you can see, it's very easy to do that. I can check it off and click here, or I can click it off down here. And I always love when I see this, when software developers 
do this kind of thing, it seems like why do they need to go to the trouble of creating two different ways of deleting it? And it's about the end user experience. When you're evaluating software and how good it is, and you want to look at how much thought has been put into this. If I'm moving, like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't want to spend time on this. I want to just have it set up and have a system in place that gives me the peace of mind that comes with knowing that when, when I need to find it, I can. But I don't want to have to spend a lot of time. So when I'm going 90 miles an hour because I just want to get this done and move on to something more interesting, then I, you know, the fact that there's a delete button here and up here makes a difference. It makes my life easier because when I'm moving fast, if there's a good chance I'm just going to look down here. So I can click delete and boom, it's gone. And remember, over here, I can go look at deleted receipts. So it appears that it's never lost forever. Let's go back to unreported receipts. So that's pretty much what you need to know as far as, you know, just working with the Expensify app in the browser and how you can manage and update and organize your receipts. Now let's look at some of the integrations. There's uh, really one integration in particular that I want to look at with you. Everything else is going to be pretty straightforward. When you go to import from, you can see I can import from my computer. That's obvious. I'm going to browse to the file and attach it. I can scan it right now if I haven't already scanned it so I can access my scanner and scan it and bring it right into Expensify. I can browse to a file on Dropbox and attach that as a receipt. The mobile just sort of refers you over to the mobile app to make sure you've got that downloaded and installed on your mobile phone. Email is interesting. You can send emails to, and I'll just bring it up for you, receipts at Expensify.com. Obviously, you want to be emailing from the email account that is used with your Expensify account so that they know where to put that receipt. But that's another way. If you have an email with a receipt attached, that's another way to get it into Expensify. There are some additional options that you'll see in this lesson in terms of how you can get receipts into Expensify. Of course, you've seen how to scan it, taking a picture with your mobile app, all the stuff that you would expect. Here are some things you won't expect. Maybe you'd expect them. One option is you can email your receipts into Expensify. That's actually pretty standard for apps like this. Another one is that Expensify has a Chrome extension. So let's say you're purchasing something online and you want to get reimbursed for it. You can use the Chrome extension to get a screen grab of the receipt when you get that confirmation that pops up. And you can use that to submit it as a receipt to be reimbursed. And finally, and this is the one that blew me away the most, many people know I'm a big fan of Evernote. Well, Expensify has a really nice Evernote integration where all I had to do was set up the integration by simply going through the settings in Expensify and turning it on. Then once I had Expensify integrated with Evernote, a notebook was created in my Evernote account called Expensify. Then all I had to do was drop a receipt into a note in that notebook in Evernote, and the smart scan process started happening automatically. So once I have the Evernote integration, any receipts I have, I can scan them, drop them right into that notebook in Evernote, and the receipt gets scanned, and all the magic that happens with smart scan starts happening. I love this integration, and this is yet another reason why I love Expensify as an application, and yet another reason why we're using it internally at schoolofbookkeeping.com. Next on the list, the browser. So you've got this great little Chrome extension that you can install so that when you get those pop-ups when you're ordering something online, let's say, and the confirmation pops up, you know, most of them email it too. But this way, again, you have options. You have choices. You can use the extension here so that it'll grab what's on your screen and make a receipt out of that and put it in Expensify. The Evernote integration is the one that sort of uh, excites me the most here, and I'm going to show you why. Let me bring up my... Uh, schoolofbookkeeping.com Evernote uh, account. This is my desktop app. I've already linked the accounts. That part's easy to do. When you initially click to, uh, uh, you know, click on that Expensify uh, or no Evernote integration, it's going to take you to, uh, you know, link the two accounts. You basically have to log into Evernote, log into Expensify, and give... Uh, Expensify permission to access your Evernote account. And notice here it says it recognizes I've already you know, done the integration. So what that will do is it will create an Expensify notebook in your Evernote account. All you have to do now is drop receipts in there. So remember uh, a couple of videos back, I talked about how I name receipts. And this is something that I actually do if I look at my scans. Uh, in terms of how, where, how I track my receipts, I keep them in Evernote. So watch this. So here's, here's my scans again. So these are scans I've done recently as of the time I'm recording this. They're different, uh, you know, JPEGs of receipts. And some of them, uh, because they're JPEGs, 
uh, you don't have multiple pages, so I have multiple copies, and I'll just append the file name with the letter P, so it'll be P1, P2, like page 1, page 2, and so on. Uh, and some of these are different receipts. They're sorted by name now, so you get the same vendor in one place. So let's say I sort by the date here, just so you can get an idea of what that looks like. What, I'm, what I do in Evernote is I create a new note, and now that we have the Expensify integration, I'm going to do it in the Expensify notebook. So I'm going to say New Note, and I'm going to bring this subway receipt. Just click and drag it. And notice what Evernote does is because I've named the file, it names the note after in the same way that the file is named. So then I just say New, and let's do, I've got another subway down here, and New, and here's my note with bagels. And let's do one more. New note, and here's a Union 76, a gas receipt. So then I'm going to sync these up. If I don't do that manually, it will every so often automatically sync up. And then we want to take a look at what this looks like in Expensify. But as you can, I'm sure you can already figure out where this is going. Any receipts that I drop into uh, the Expensify notebook here will be imported automatically into my Expensify account. So and here they are and look what it's doing not only did it find them but it's already smart scanning them to try and again assign the merchant name the date and the amount of the expense I love this because I love keeping my receipts in Evernote because Evernote has such great search and you can search within the JPEGs so if I come over here and uh, this says 76 victory right so let's just go to all notes here and let's say I want to look up 76 notice how it finds that receipt it can search within the JPEG to find information. Let's try clearing that all out, all notes. Uh, I'll just go away from that notebook for a minute, then all notes again. And then let's say I want to search for the amount 2515. Look at that. First of all, it's in the it's in the uh, the uh, the note title because of the way I named it, but it will also find it based on the fact that it's here. So Evernote's an amazing place to keep track of receipts. And now this way, I've got kind of a backup. So when I'm looking for the receipts, I can either go into Evernote or I can go into Expensify. I absolutely love the fact that they have this. And if you really want to get crazy, I can actually uh, I can start tagging these. So I can use tags for the name like Union76 or Noah's Bagels. That will just make it that much easier to find things. And again, the more time I take now at the moment when I'm logging these receipts to organize them and have these systems and use them, the more headaches I'll save myself down the road when I have to go eventually find one of these receipts, whatever the reason might be. And that, my friends, is everything I think I can tell you for now about how to track, manage, and organize your receipts using Expensify. As always, if you have any questions, please post them in the answers forum of our website, available only to students of schoolofbookkeeping.com. At this point, you've seen how to do just about everything you could possibly hope to do when it comes to organizing and managing your receipts, from first getting a receipt into Expensify all the way through to doing the actual organization and management of that information. So now we're going to do the next logical thing, possibly the moment you've all been waiting for, which is where you might have seen on their website where it says Expensify, expense reports that don't suck. We're going to take a look at how the reports part of expense reports that don't suck actually works.